Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am Danny Walker. Thank you for clicking on this episode. I hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting the notifications so you will know when new episodes come out. This episode is brought to you by Rehearse to Relatable contestants. If you wanna learn how to make an impact in the interview room, how to be memorable to the judges, then check this out in the description below. So many of you flooded my inbox to discuss this and make an episode on it. And I think that this is worth talking about because of future contestants. So really that's what I want this takeaway to be. So let me just preface this by saying that there has been a little riff, little, little kind of disagreement between the team of Miss Universe Canada, Nova Stevens, and Michael Cinco's team, and Michael Cinco himself, essentially. And let's always keep in mind that there's three sides to every story, right? Yours, mine, and the truth. So I think that the only people that really will know what happened here or really what transpired were the people that were directly involved, and everybody else like you and me are just here speculating. So there was a comment that has been screenshotted and shared online, and this is from M G mode, which is the team for Miss Universe Canada, and they helped to prepare her and help with her PR. So let's see what they commented that's causing all the buzz, right? Here's what it said. The truth need to be told. The gown was sent late by Michael's team, and when it arrived, none of them fitted. We were able to fix the one for the finals, but the one for prelims, we didn't have time. So here are the two gowns I'll show you. We went to Dubai two times to prevent such mistakes since it happened to us as well with Argentina's gown last year and Uruguay's. Whoa. Such a terrible mistake should not have happened. We love Michael, but this was inexplicable. At the same time, they had to at the same time, they had time to custom made a gown for another delegate who checked in with her custom made Michael Cinco gown. Things don't add up, sadly. Michael responded. Hi Miguel, I don't normally respond to unnecessary social media rants, but this one caught my ire as it seems to put uncalled for blame on my team. The audacity of truth to be told when it is bereft of it. Firstly, the gowns arrived on time. Or how could you have sent me photos and videos of her wearing them showing how the gowns perfectly fitted her days before each event? The video shows that the gown fits her perfectly. It is not ill-fitting as you are spreading the rumors. You are just forcing me to make Nova's waistline from 26 to be cinched to 23, which I obviously didn't do it, but you told me in pageant comfort is not important. But you told me in pageant, comfort is not important. Secondly, the insinuation that my team was trying to sabotage her win is just absurd. Her life story was supposedly inspiring and in Dubai just to give her extra publicity mileage and create for her a balance of glam and luxury as opposed to her humble homecoming in Africa and everything was paid by me. Thirdly, if it doesn't add up to you, I'll add Miss Romania, Miss Mexico, and Miss Czech Republic, who all wore my couture gowns from my new collection. Sadly, it is none of your business. Let me just add that they are endlessly thankful. The new Miss Universe 2020 Miss Mexico, Andrea, was so grateful and sent me a thank you message even though she didn't wear my gown in prelims right after her coronation. Miss Romania was so gracious to send me a video message and thank me a million times for creating her gown. In fact, she wants me to come next week to Dubai to personally thank me. Miss Czech was so humble and proud to wear my gown. Even Miss Universe 2017, Demi, sent me many thank you messages. But from your side, I didn't even receive a thank you note from you, Nova Stevens, Davila Dennis, and from Miss Canada organization. It only shows how ungrateful you are. And here you are beating me for things that are not true. Stop blaming me for Miss Canada didn't make it into the top 21 because I have nothing to do with the fact that she didn't wear my gown in the preliminary competition and you are already posting in social media that she will wear another dress prior to prelims and now you will tell me that her gown killed her to advance to semis and I am to be blamed for that and lastly here is the truth to be told you are using me for three consecutive years to dress up your candidates without paying any sense 
and I don't even get anything from that and you don't even have an audacity to send me even a simple thank you from your team and Nova. The real truth is you are a user, vile and ungrateful person. Shame on you and all your team. Next time, don't use Filipino designers and use designers from your country and represent them in the world stage so you will be happy and not thinking that we are sabotaging your candidates. Now, I didn't see a response from her team in the messages that were sent to me from these comments. I don't know if there was one because I don't know where this post originated from. Nobody has sent me that yet and I couldn't find it online, but whoa. I am in shock with this one. It's really, really, sad to hear all of this. I know that Nova was pictured in both of the Michael Cinco gowns, but that she wore a Colombian designer for prelims instead. I can't even imagine having that many gown options for a competition and for free. Nonetheless, oh my gosh, just that type of support always blows my mind. I can't even believe that these contestants have multiple designers and that these designers are doing this for free. That's a lot of generosity from them and their team. I would say I haven't also seen anything said by Nova yet and I don't really know what her part is or isn't in all of this. Some of you might have some more details but I want to look at this from a bigger perspective for the sake of learning lessons. There is a quote that I love and it is may the bridges you burn light your way and this reminds me of that perfect example clearly michael cinco is very upset about this and doesn't want to support future canada universe representatives and that is sad that is terrible to hear about and this is exactly what i was talking about when i did an episode on amanda miss thailand and how she lost the position and was fired from being the mental health ambassador of her country and how things like that when it happens in one contestant's year could affect the year of title holders to come. Now in this case, I don't know how much of this actually had to do with Nova, but it was her team clearly that that's having this issue with Michael Cinco. And this is what I was talking about. You need to be very careful as a title holder, as an organization, when you interact with sponsors, with people within pageantry, because you can really burn a bridge and it's not only potentially harming the contestant that year, but contestants in the future. And I think that that's really important to remember. And it also reminds me of something because I do see a lot of posts on Instagram about contestants who were robbed at Miss Universe or Miss USA or Miss Grand International. I mean, like you pick it, there's always a year where everybody says, oh, she was so robbed. It's funny because that's, I understand where fans are coming from who have a very outside perspective, but there are so many times in pageants where the reason that a contestant didn't move forward is because of things like this that might happen behind the scenes, because of their attitude, how they treat people behind the scenes, and that is exactly why for organizations like Miss Universe and like Miss USA, why they have clauses in their contract that allow them to pull different contestants from semifinals. I'm not saying that that is what happened here, I'm saying that it does happen though, and I can think of a few contestants that many people have said were robbed and I know for a fact that behind the scenes not very nice all right and so when I see people say they got robbed I just think you have no idea actually what happened in the background and if you knew what happened you would be thankful that she didn't advance in the competition because that's not a title holder that you would want to see reigning for the year because they would continue to poorly treat people throughout their reign, whether that's in the public or behind closed doors. And you have to think with organizations that are huge, like Miss Universe, it's important for them to select title holders that are going to be easy to work with, not only with them within their organization, but also with sponsors, with fans, all of that stuff is taken into consideration when they're selecting a title holder because you have to deal with her for a year. You don't want somebody that's difficult to deal with. And I can think of one title holder, for example, within the last few years that I didn't put into my preliminary predictions episodes and not because she wouldn't have competed well or wasn't stunning on stage, but it was actually because her organization actually reached out to me and they told me about an event that happened and occurred actually multiple things that happened during her year and they explained that 
they really weren't even supporting their representative anymore because of how poorly she treated people. And they said there is no way she will win at the next level. She's not gonna really have the support she needed from us and really doesn't deserve it because she's not a kind person. And I got backlash from people for not putting her in predictions for semifinals. And it's just because I know some things that you don't. And that is exactly how judges feel. That's exactly how organizations feel. But it's also not the job of an organization or myself or anyone to start, you know, throwing people under the bus and calling them out and saying, I know that this happened with this contestant and this is why she doesn't deserve to win. I really just believe what goes around comes around and I don't have to call people out publicly, especially if I am not involved in the event firsthand. So that's just something that I want everybody to be thinking about when we see things like this happen in pageantry. It's advice that I would like to share with upcoming contestants. Be humble, be gracious, be kind to people. It counts, guys, it counts. I would encourage you not to just be worried about beauty of your face, but beauty of your heart as well. And that's exactly the type of contestant that people truly root for. And those are the women that end up being successful in pageantries most of the time. I'm not gonna say that there aren't exceptions, but most of the time, those are those ladies that you're gonna see win those big titles. Those are the type of qualities that judges are recognizing in a contestant in an interview room or while they're competing. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of perspective that is not even associated with this particular situation, but I think that this situation is a really good example to mention, and it's something that a lot of contestants and organizations can learn from. And like I said, you and I are just gonna be spectators in all of this. The parties involved are the ones that know what actually went down, and I'm not sure that we'll ever fully understand and what happened or if there were miscommunications, which very well could have occurred. I do see that a lot too in pageants. I see a lot of miscommunication that leads to people making assumptions about things that just aren't true. So lots of things to consider there and I hope that there's some really good lessons here in this episode for everyone to take away. I wanna wrap everything up and mention that this stuff ends up being far reaching. Somebody sent me a post from the Manila Bulletin that said, Michael Cinco to Miss Universe Canada handlers. Next time, don't use Filipino designers. Whoa, this could be a lot further reaching than just Michael Cinco and that stuff can happen. So just be very, very careful friends with how you interact with one another in pageantry and how you interact with one another just in real life. Remember, may the bridges you burn light your way. So if you're gonna burn bridges, make sure you have a plan B for things, okay? Make sure that there's a real good purpose for it. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Please share with me below what you may know about this. I know that I don't have all the information on it. So if you have more to share with everyone, you can leave that in the comment section below. I appreciate all of you and I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you're subscribed for lots more. I'll see you soon.